What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today we have a really good match here. I'm using a brand new team, kind of just full of Pokemon that I haven't used in a while and wanted to test out a little bit. Always nice to switch it up every once in a while. If you do enjoy these types of videos, help me out by hitting that like button. It does greatly help out the channel and I do appreciate all the support. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, uh, this guy's working with kind of an interesting team. There's definitely some pretty standard OU threats like the Scizor is quite scary. There's the Infernape. Uh, but other than that, there's a couple wild cards with the um, the Venomoth can definitely set up. There's Tauros. Honestly, a pretty a pretty interesting matchup here. Um, quick note before we jump right into the battle, I actually did not start recording until a couple turns in. I, I, I forgot to hit the record button. Um, so it may look a little bit different, but we do have technology, thankfully. So I'm going to be leading off with my Moltres. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect, so I kind of wanted to get a U-turn. But they actually end up leading off with their Tauros. So I do not want to stay in there and take a Rock Slide. So I actually end up switching into the Waylord here as he goes for a Thunderbolt. And that is interesting. But uh, I am Choice Scarf. This allows me to outspeed and go for a Scald. I do actually luckily knock it down to red. But unfortunately, it does take me out uh, with the next Thunderbolt. So see you later, Waylord. Now this allows me a free switch, and I decide to go into my Chime Echo just so I can maybe get some stuff set up. This thing actually ends up going for the Thrash. Uh, it locked itself into Thrash, that hurts a lot, but I am able to get up a Reflect here, which is really nice. I have the Light Clay, it's gonna stick around for a minute. Uh, locked into Thrash obviously goes for it again, and with the Reflect up, Chime Echo is actually able, able to live it, which is uh, kind of crazy. But I get up a Reflect before I die, and this allows me now a free switch into my Cray Dilly, and it's about to go down. So at this point, I remembered to hit start recording, and we're back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, those paint drying frames will be auctioned off as limited edition NFTs, starting at a million dollars each. Anyway, um, I get Cradillion in here, and behind a reflect in a light screen, uh, I'm kind of invincible, really. <laughs> I'm gonna go for some curses here, as I forgot to mention that the Tauros is actually now confused from the Thrash, so uh, that is pretty great. Uh, actually breaks through the confusion, gets off the ice beam, and behind that light screen, Cradilly says, what ice beam, bitch? I'm out here with the eight dicks on my head. I do not care. Uh, so I get up another curse. So now I'm sitting at plus two attack and defense, uh, minus two speed, but I mean, Cradle is not going to be outspeeding anything anyway. Quick shout out to Tyler Howard for recommending this set. If you have any specific Pokemon you'd like me to use, let me know in the comments, uh, and I'll probably get around to it, to be honest. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set up one more curse. I'm feeling like at plus three, Cradle is looking pretty comfortable, swaying back and forth, just Enjoying the weather here inside the shiny floor room. Anyway, uh, they end up switching to the Venomoth here on my next curse, and that's actually fine. Since the light screen is still up, I know that no matter how hard this Venomoth tries, it's not going to be do doing very much uh, with a Bug Buzz. Only bad case scenario is if it's Focus Ash and it can kind of get a couple off uh, to weaken the, the Cradilly Sweep a little bit here. But sitting at near full HP, I'm just going to go right for the Earthquake here. And uh, it's weird that I've always thought it's weird that you can earthquake Venomoth. This guy, he's not flying, and he just he hates ground moves. So we shake the ground that he's flying above, and that is going to knock it down to its sash. So it is focus sash. Was not able to get up my stealth rock early, um, which always comes back to bite you, to be honest. But the opponent also doesn't have stealth rock of their own, which is great for uh, my team specifically, my Moltres. So I know that obviously I just want to stay in here and let this thing. Uh, hit me with another Bug Buzz and then I can finish it off with one more attack here. I'm actually sitting at a pretty decent amount of HP here with Cradilly, so Venomoth was not too big of an issue, and that thing can be extremely scary if it sets up um, some Quiver Dances. So glad to take care of that thing. Cradilly's over here chilling, still swaying, eating some leftovers. Honestly, to do just on vacation, but Reflect wears off. Um, not too big of a deal. Light Screen will go away next turn as I set Light Screen up one turn after. Uh, they decide to go into my low tick here, and you'll see I go first. I go for the lead seed just because I know this thing's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, and since I went first, that basically tells me it went for Dragon Tail. And you hate to see it because uh, that is going to stop Cradilly in his tracks. He basically says, I'm heading back to the bag. And uh, out comes the Kabutops, which isn't specifically a great matchup for me. Um, but I know that also this thing cannot kill me in one hit as well, as there goes the light screen. So we're back to normal at this point. I'm going to go for a knockoff. Now it's interesting, I didn't see a Flame Orb on that Milotic, so I just kind of wanted to go for the knockoff here as they actually end up switching into Scizor. And based off of this damage, I can tell already that that's not a max defense Scizor, and also we saw that it dropped a Metronome. So, shout out to this dude for using uh, not the usual Scizor, that's kind of fun. 
Um, but free hugs over here is just ready to ready to give out some free hugs. He doesn't. This guy just look like the most huggable Pokemon you've ever seen. Uh, it goes for the bullet punch, I assume, to just get some damage before it goes down. As I do, in fact, land the uh, the Stone Edge, aka Stone Miss, but I actually hit it that time. So that takes out Scizor, and that's another huge threat way out of the way. So amazing as. Now they get a free switch and whatever they want, and Infernape comes in. I'm expecting them to probably just have Mach Punch, but if they don't, I got that uh, got that one in the chamber Aqua Jet, but it turns out yeah, he does go for the Mach Punch there, um, which is going to kind of ruin Kabutops. The thing is specifically on this team for Rapid Spin and stuff like that, so since there wasn't any Stealth Rock up, I was fine letting that thing go down, as I, did not really, I don't really have a lot of options left on my squad here. Um, but now I get a free switch into Spicy McNugget, looking... Magnificent up there as I'm just gonna go ahead and lock myself into air slash. I am actually a choice specs um, Spicy McNugget here if you're wondering uh, this thing does hit super hard and I've always had fun using using specs Moltres It really just hates stealth rock, but in comes Tauros from the beginning uh, The thing is just gonna go down for death fodder and that allows them a free switch into whatever they like But it's looking like Moltres could potentially be my win condition here I do kind of have to try to conserve this thing to my best uh, to my, the best of my abilities here as they go back into the Water Snake. So I have Storm Drain on Cradilly, which is kind of funny because I'm not a special attacker whatsoever, but it still allows me a nice free switch into Water Moves. Uh, would be fantastic if that healed me, but I get that clean special attack boost. And at this point, they really they don't know Cradilly's moveset fully. Um, so they, uh, they, they probably are expecting a Grass move here as I just have... Um, you know, Rock Slide and Earthquake for my damage moves. I go for the Earthquake here to get as much as possible. Cradilly, I don't know why you don't get Seed Bomb or something. It's kind of upsetting. But I go for the Earthquake as he actually brings in the Infernape expecting a Grass move. So bluffing the Cradilly Grass move kind of uh, kind of helped me out there as I was able to lure in the old Fire Ape. And Physical Cradilly is still doing its thing over here. I'm actually even still above half, which is amazing. And looking at this matchup, he's likely just going to go for the close combat, I assume. So I could potentially switch in Moltres here with his sweet glasses. I can come in on that um, and likely take two of them while killing with an Air Slash on the next turn. So I bring back in McNugget. Does go for the close combat, and that does more damage than I was hoping for, but still setting me above half. So I can still take one more, but this Infernape still is kind of the biggest, uh, the biggest obstacle between me and winning this match. I really just need to take care of this guy uh, because my the rest of my team does not like it. But they do still have the Melotic in the back. Pretty damn healthy. That's kind of why I wanted to go for uh, locking myself into the Air Slash in case this thing comes in as it does. Specs Air Slash is gonna do just enough for a two hit kill here. And um, that is great because Melotic is the most annoying Pokemon in existence other than, you know, like Blissey, but you love to see it die. So takes care of that thing. Now they're down to two Pokemon. They've got the Donphan and the Infernape. Now I've got to take care of the Donphan first, but Infernape still is in the back of my mind as something that I need to make sure that I take care of. But I have to switch out here because I need to conserve Moltres. Um, I don't really know what this Donphan is going to be working with, but he's not going to Earthquake um, on Moltres. So I can just switch in Cradilly, which is probably going to be my best bet. Um, and I'm also pretty sure that Donphan actually outspeeds me as well. So it's kind of just going to be a Death Fodder switch into Cradilly, depending on what they go for here. Um, and it ends up being uh, an Ice Shard, which is actually kind of nice because had they set up Stealth Rock, uh, that would have put Moltres in a bad position as I would be able to live a switch in, but just barely. Um, but Cradilly does not quite have enough enough health here to kind of continue his shenanigans. This thing took like 12 hits today, and Cradilly's fucking tired. Get this guy on the couch, and uh, you deserve a nice break. So that, <laughs> that does take care of me, um, but luckily now I can get a free switch into my Nido Queen. So, the bad news is I was not able to break the Donphan sturdy, and that was kind of the main objective there, but Cradilly just does not obviously have, obviously have the speed to do that. All I can really do at this point is bring in the Nido Queen, um, just get enough damage to knock this thing to sturdy, potentially, then bring in Moltres and finish it off. Also, I have a plan in my head to where the only Pokemon they have left is going to be that ape. So, I could set up the Stealth Rock, and if they don't get a Rapid Spin off, Infernape literally just can't switch in, and that allows me to win the game. So, I decide to make that risky move, I go for the Stealth Rock here, rather than... Uh, getting the damage off on this thing. I figured that's probably um, Gonna be useful. It's gonna kind of force them to rapid spin um, If they you know, obviously they have it Donphan It's actually nice to see Donphan back in the meta again 
the guy kind of sucked for a while, but he's actually on a lot of standard teams and he's out here thriving. So, uh, did actually take me out with an earthquake there. I got the stealth rock up, which is great. And now it kind of puts him against a wall here where he has to go for rapid spin. Um, it actually kind of didn't really work out for me because I probably should have just gone ahead and knocked it to sturdy or at least got damage with the Nido Queen. Um, but I go for the Fire Blast there as they actually, you know, they live with the Sturdy, but I get the Burn. And that kind of forces him to then go for that Rapid Spin. So the Stealth Rock being gone kind of blows. Nothing really I could have done. It was a little bit of a misplay on the Nido Queen end, but whatever, it was worth a try. Anyway, uh, I get the Burn. It actually knocks it down to literally 1 HP after the Leftovers recovery, and what the hell. Uh, now I'm realizing I definitely should not have locked myself into Fire Blast. The reason is Flamethrower would literally do the same exact thing for me at this point, and I just don't have to worry about the accuracy. Uh, so that was a, that was also a misplay on my end, but I, I actually land two fl uh, Fire Blast takes care of the Don Fan, and that was just me and the Fire Monkey, couple of Fire dudes being guys. Um, so this is quite an interesting play. Of course I'm locked into Fire Blast, so I have to go for it. If they click close combat at this point, they do outspeed and knock out Moltres, but um, what I imagine happens here is they probably think that I'm actually Choice Scarf Moltres. Um, they knew since I locked myself into Fire Blast by killing the Dawn Fan at 1 HP with a Fire Blast, they probably assume uh, that I'm Choiced. Plus, um, a lot of the time you do see Scarf Moltres, so um, he probably thinks that I'm actually going to outspeed him here, but I'm actually Choice Specs instead. So they go for the Mach Punch. Uh, McNugget is able to live that. Now all I have to do is hit a Fire Blast, and I do. I managed to connect on three Fire Blasts at the end of the match, and that does take care of the monkey. So that was kind of an interesting finish there. Had he just literally clicked Close Combat, um, he wins the match. But I was able to bluff the uh, bluff the Scarf, I, I suppose. But, I mean, they could have seen the damage from like the Air Slash off on the Milotic earlier and judged that, knowing it would be... Uh, choice specs damage rather than me being scarf, but either way that game came right down to the end And I thought it was a pretty fun one. I don't know. I'm enjoying using this team uh, And it actually even wins against overused teams. So hell yeah Anyway guys, I will see you next time hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed and I will be continuing to upload some uh, some more Wi-Fi battles. Peace out